That's why he doesn't want to go public with this, because he doesn't want to hurt the children. It sounds to me like he's trying to protect his guest. Josh has been involved with this from the beginning, before I or anyone else knew about it. It's understandable why he'd be emotionally involved. Oh, and exactly how emotionally involved is he? Look, I don't know what you're trying to get at here, but Josh loves Reva, and there's no doubt about that, okay? Well, then why would he, he keep that woman here, in, in this house? W would you do that to someone that you loved? Look, I told you, because it's involved. So what, is he in love with her? No, no, he's not in love with her. He's not in love with her, it's, but... But, but what? Look, he, he was broken up when he thought Reva had died, and all of a sudden there's this woman walking around who looks just like Reva, and it, yeah. it only happened once, and then he realized it wasn't Reva, so... What? You telling me that he slept with her? not all black and white, Sean. Give me a break. He had sex with her. While Reva was fighting like hell to get back to Josh, he was having sex with that creation of his. How black and white can you get? Don't you dare sit in judgment of him. You haven't been through what he has, okay? He was practically destroyed when he thought Reva was dead. He didn't know she was alive. And the thought of having to tell his children that their mother was dead. And then there was this woman walking around who looked and sounded just like Reva. Who shouldn't have been here in the first place. Look, you have to tell me because I hated it, okay? Well, what I don't understand is why Joshua didn't hate it. Look, he listened to me, all right, and he tried to stop this thing many of times. Well, obviously he didn't try hard enough. No, he did. He wanted to send her away. He wanted her to have a life of her own. But then, then she fell in love with him. And she wanted to be the Reva that he remembered. And, and you know what? It's like she was. It was like she became Reva. She almost killed his wife. I, he had no idea that she was capable of that. I mean, Reva would have never. Don't you understand? It was like she became Reva. No. No, I don't understand. And I doubt very much if I ever will. You know, we can do this any way you want, but I got to tell you, it, it, it hurts me a little bit to think that uh, you don't think I can handle it. I didn't say that. I just think that you're too close to it. You're too involved. Maybe you're right. But we still don't have an answer, do we? We, we can't send her away, certainly not now. Maybe we should find somebody for her to talk to, somebody that will help her to become her own person. You mean a therapist? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Dumb idea. I guess there's not really a therapist out there who would be able to handle this, is there? I, I keep thinking, too, though, that um, it would probably help her if she could stay here in the house with us, at least until we figure something else but, uh, out, but that's, uh, that's impossible. Maybe not. I have an idea. You will never be a part of Jason's life, much less mine. But I already am, Blake. I could never have anything to do with somebody who's capable of cruelty like you. What crime have I committed? Oh, please. Asking Ross whether Jason was his or Rick's when you know damn well who Sonny is. And you also know that there's a possible custody suit situation happening with Kevin. And boy, did you play on that one. That was good. Blake, you have no idea what I know. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean, Ben? What? Do you have other threats you're going to hold over my head? Blake, I am not trying to threaten you or trap you. I just want you to be honest with me and with yourself about what you feel. I don't have any feelings. Oh, we both know that's not true. Well, Ben, if I did have feelings for you, you have very effectively managed to kill them. Now, please go. Well, you may want them dead, but they're still alive. I love my husband, and I love my sons, and you're not going to do anything to change them. But, Blake, it's already changed. I see it in your eyes. I see it in the tape of the two of us. I'm throwing that tape away, I told you. You still have it? Just because I haven't had the, tr the chance to trash it, Ben, but I'm throwing that thing out. I'm 
promise you. Well, there's no time like the present. Why don't you go get the tape? Destroy it now in front of me. I'll be happy to leave then. You wouldn't do that. No, I'm serious, Hart. This is not an idle threat. I just got a flash of what my life is going to be like. And you know what? I'm not going to have a life. Constantly having Cassie shoved in my face, endlessly fighting with her, having to watch you and her while I'm raising your child. Dinah, no. listen to me, Dinah. You're going to have this baby, and you're never going to have to deal with Cassie again. That's I the promise kind of future you. future that I'm going to have. That's the kind of future that my baby is going to have. Well, then maybe I just should not bring her into the world. Dinah? It's not too late to terminate the pregnancy. You wouldn't do that. Wouldn't I? What do you think? I think it might work. I mean, it's pretty far out there, but it's better than anything I've come up with. And if anybody can make it work, it's you. We can make it work because we are a team, remember? Yeah, we're a good team, Coach. <laughs> you know, you seemed very concerned about Reba. Of course I am. Aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I am. Just the way you look at her, the way your voice sounds when you talk about her. Seems a little more than just friendly. That's not true. I understand Josh and Reva's offer, and I also understand that you're in a tight spot. But you staying here? I think it's going to lead to big trouble. without this, weren't you? Excuse me? Deliberately. <laughs> you obviously have me confused with someone who gives a damn. <laughs> I am not at all confused about you. <laughs> well, so it isn't love at first sight. Yeah, very funny. Well, you look the bright side. Which is? Things can only get better. Is someone paying you to do this? I'm a natural born Cupid. Well, Amy Arrow, somewhere else, cute. You picked the wrong target. Maybe, maybe not. You have a customer. Hello, Counselor. Hello, Buzz. Lay it on me. You have your own problems. No, I've met none. Now, so take this once-in-a-lifetime offer. I said some things to Blake. Maybe I shouldn't have said. Well, I have some experience with marriage, you know. Marriage is sort of like a boat. If it is, then mine's sinking. No, well, not unless you let it. I mean, sure, you could spring some leaks, you know, you tear your sail, break your rudder, but everything could be fixed, and then you're sailing on that sparkling sea again. You know? Buzz, you have a touch of the poet, eh? So? Come on, she loves you, you love her. Stop looking like that. Go home. You can fix the leak. And my sail and my tiller and... I have automobile metaphors that are longer if you don't go. Captain Buzz. Aye, aye. You haven't looked at it? This is the last thing in the world that I want to look at. You aren't curious? Not in the least. You still have it. I told you. It's because I haven't had a chance to throw it out yet. I know what you told me, Blake. I also know what you felt in my hotel room. I know what we both felt. And I would never use your children against you, Blake. You have to believe that, please. And I don't know what to believe. I'm so... What? I don't know. I, well, I know. You're frightened. You're frightened of what would happen if you stopped fighting me for just one minute. Well, <laughs> let me tell you a secret. I'm, I'm frightened too. Anybody come?
This has been Guiding Light. Menswear provided by Versace Classic.